What is up guys and welcome back. This week is going to be all about the defense of Russia. Last week we talked about invading Russia. This week we're going to be talking all about uh, how to try to defend it and how to try to repel those pesky Germans. Again, I just have the base setups here, nothing fancy because I have no way of predicting how the game is going to go uh, up until this point. So I'm going to be talking in very broad terms, nothing too, too specific, just kind of uh, big things that I like to watch out for and uh, try to set up a defense here of Russia. All right, let's go. Okay, starting off again with our intentions in this defense. First and foremost, we need to make sure we aren't just bleeding victory points because in the rules for every territory you lose in home country worth an IPP is gonna cost you a victory point at the end of the game, which can be absolutely devastating for the Russians here. So first and foremost, we need to stop the bleeding as quickly as possible. Uh, here in orange, I have marked all reasonable candidates for the Germans to take uh, during their invasion worth IPPs, um, which <laughs> is most of them. The only two you don't have to worry about are Northern Belarusia here and the Southern Ukraine, which are both worth nothing. Other than that, every territory the Germans take off you here in, in this front is gonna cost you a victory point, which is bad. You know, that's bad. How do you win the game? You have more victory points. So how are we going to stop them? This is a very, very complicated question with more answers than I can count or reasonably talk about in a short video here, but I will try. And here when we're defending, the things we need to think about are how the Germans are wanting to score their points. Uh, I talked about this extensively in my last video. They're gonna want your cities and they're gonna want this front line here and the Baltic states. And those that should be the Germans' main goal. So that's what we're gonna wanna try to contest as much as possible. Now, assuming you've got Finland up here, if you invaded them, you're gonna wanna throw probably just a militia or two in each of these spots, specifically Southern Finland and Lapland up here, because they are within easy striking distance of the Germans. Um, if you signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and took the Baltic states as well as Eastern Poland here, I'm gonna be honest with you, you're probably gonna lose them. But it does give you an extra two bucks there for a couple turns before the Germans come attack you which may or may not be worth it, depending on how well you fight in East Poland, if that Polish, if those Polish troops are gonna hit you or not, but odds are they won't. So if you do happen to sign the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, go ahead and take these two uh, territories. I'm specifically talking about Lubelski here, uh, because as I mentioned in my last video, Lubelski is a great place for the Germans to launch a direct assault on Leningrad on their first turn when you're gonna be, um, performing poorly on defense is going to be harder for you to defend that first attack. Um, so I like to try to take Lubelski to provide what it's called in, in real life, a buffer zone against the Germans. Uh, you want some room to fall back and you want to make them have to travel as far as possible because the further they have to go, the more time you're going to have to really get your production going and get some, some good units out there. So, if you're of the mind that you'd like to sign the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact as the Russians, then you absolutely take these territories uh, because the, the buffer zones are a good thing for you, even though you know you're going to lose them. It's just more territory and more ground that the German infantry specifically have to cover. The further away their infantry are, the better, because that just it takes forever for them to move. Uh, the next point I wanted to talk about was fortifications. I think that fortifications are great for the Russians. It really makes life on the Germans tough because they're so unpredictable. They provide you a huge boost in the first round. Um, the plus two to your defense cannot be overstated. It just makes your defenses so much more unpredictable, which drives an offensive player crazy. Um, if they're running into a fortification, it's 
just that extra thing that they have to worry about, you know. I promise you it makes life on an attacking player way more difficult than just attacking a normal city or something. And also another benefit of dropping a fortification in a city is that it basically negates the penalty for the surrounding. Obviously, after the first round, the fortification goes away and you will be at your minus one, but for the first round, it does essentially negate that debuff you get for being surrounded in a city. So whenever I'm building fortifications, I do like to put them in cities because also it, you, it lets you cover more ground. You're defended from all sides instead of having to build them on unique borders, which is a little bit tougher of a deal. And the fortifications are something you're gonna wanna do, you know, two turns before you think the Germans are gonna attack, uh, cause you wanna see what the Germans do beforehand, see kind of where they're building up. If they're building up down here in Romania and they're gonna crush you, like you're, there's no way you can hold Kiev, that's fine. But try to throw up a fortification, maybe on this Kursk border, uh, just to give yourself a little extra protection and make sure that it is almost impossible for them to get into Kursk. Uh, Kursk is gonna be a really pivotal and I don't think you should almost never lose Kursk. It's a central location with that major factory and it's a good place for you to really start most of your counterattacks from. So if he's coming heavy south and there's no way that you think you can hold Kiev, this border right here between Kursk and Eastern Ukraine is a great place for fortification. Uh, making him even go around here is gonna cost him time and that's gonna be a good thing for you. You are trying to stall the Germans because eventually, just like in real life, you will get your industry going. Again, it's, it's similar to the KMT where early on you don't necessarily want to counterattack using your infantry because they're so much better on defense. But if he's got some tanks exposed, then absolutely throw some bodies in there and try to take out his valuable units. It's just like in Global 40. If he exposes himself, then you counterattack and take out his valuable units. If not, you stay on the defensive until you have him completely overwhelmed. So as I mentioned, I think Kursk is a really good place uh, to really set your fallback line. If he comes north straight towards Leningrad, you can hit him in the side here from Kursk. If he's coming down into the south through Romania, then you can build a fortification on this border and really kind of stop him in his tracks, bide your time, and then get in there later on and try to take all that territory back. Now you've, you're gonna lose a lot of victory points in here potentially if you aren't able to eventually build up, but you know, he's got you beat so bad at the beginning that's a risk you kinda gotta take. And always watch out for his airborns. If he's got an airborne back here ready to go, make sure you've got your cities taken care of with, you know, if he's got one airborne, then just an infantry and a militia is probably all you need. If he's got two airborns, then an infantry and two militia and you'll be fine. But just keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on his transport up here. Depending on what he does with his fleet, you may or may not win the Baltics down here. I think it's it's always a good idea to try to win the Baltic. Um, you know, if he doesn't get anything from the Vichy rolls, then you've got a good chance of taking him out in the Baltic uh, fight down here. Really all you need are, you know, a couple more subs and you've got it. And then you can raid the crap out of this uh, convoy line right here, which is always a good idea because he's not gonna be able to defend it very easily. Now that I've talked about some overarching, you know, ideas, my favorite defense of Russia is going to be to, I love to fortify the crap out of Smolensk, drop a fortification in Smolensk, and just let the Germans know off the bat that you're going to make them work for it. And then, you know, if they try to go from Smolensk, do make them work for it. It's a good defensive position for you. You've got Moscow right there. You've got Kursk right next to it to reinforce it. Of course, keep Kursk safe. If you're feeling threatened, then do not lose this factory in Kursk. Uh, a good place to put it is back here, just one step back. 
because that's just that much further they have to go and very rarely will this be a dangerous place to put your factory so if you're feeling threatened and feel like you might not be able to you're and feeling like you might lose Kursk then go ahead move your factory back but I love to load up in Smolensk and load up in Kursk with light defense in here don't just let them take it and try to you know some militia or a couple infantry you know a little bit of dudes in Kiev just to make him think about working for it you don't have to win all those fights but don't give him any land for free I I hate doing that some people like it I hate it, it it's a personal opinion uh, you'll be you'll probably be fine either way so why not and down here in the Crimea, if you just throw three infantry in here, it, it is so hard for them to take just because of that fortification. The fortifications in this game are awesome. Use them to the best of your ability. You start with a natural fortification here in the Crimea. So if you put three or four infantry in there, he's got to divert a lot of resources down there to take you out. And it's a huge annoyance for him. And the resources he has to take down there our resources that aren't going anywhere else and are really it, it slows them down anything you can do you want to make them have to work to get through your land you want to slow them down as much as possible uh, and give yourself time to get a ton of units on the board because you can as the Russians so we've got Smolensk fortified we've got Kursk fortified from this position you can stop him coming south and then eventually counterattack back in and here in Smolensk, if he's coming north, you'll hopefully stop in him in Smolensk. But if not, if you lose it, then it was hopefully very, very expensive for him. You're going to have very limited money in the early game. So you've basically got to choose one place to make a fortress. And I think Smolensk is a good idea. It basically shuts off the northern approach for an attack. And it I feel it's you can bottle him in down here in the south. Leningrad has the natural fortification, which makes it that much easier to defend. Um, you know, some infantry in Leningrad makes Smolensk look as scary as possible. And in terms of, you know, total war, it all just depends on what the German player is doing. If he's going south, then go ahead and destroy some of these railroads in here for sure. Don't do it willy-nilly because you're going to need those railroads at some point as well, you know. If you think you're going to lose Kiev and he doesn't get there on the first turn, go ahead and destroy that air base. Same goes for Smolensk. Um, but really try to keep your facilities alive because you're going to want to use them later on in the game as well. So there are just a ton of things that the Germans could try on you. And I really think that a nice, solid defensive center in Smolensk and Kursk gives you enough flexibility to react to anything that the Germans may do. And obviously you're gonna to have to specifically tailor it to what you see in the given game state. But that's just my personal preference and it has worked very well for me. Let me know in the comments what you guys like to do in your defense of Russia. It's, <laughs> there are so many things you can do and it's, it's one of the most fun parts of the game. So that's all I got for you guys this week. I'll see you next time for the Battle of Britain.